Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today, we're going to be going over radioactivity. So to start with, we're going to look at um, a couple of radioactive isotopes, and we're going to talk about how something can be stable or unstable because of the amount of neutrons it has. So something that you need to be aware of is that if an atom has too many or too few neutrons, it can become unstable. So we have um, a piece of uranium ore here, which is highly radioactive, and then we have a um, stable isotope of carbon. This is carbon-12. Um, and so there is an ideal ratio of neutrons to protons that lets you at least have an idea whether your isotope is most likely going to be stable or not stable. Uh, the first kind of bit of that is a one-to-one -one ratio, um, but that can extend up to a 1.5 to one ratio. And again, we're looking at the ratio of neutrons to protons. So that does mean that you can have the same amount of neutrons and protons. So like in this carbon isotope, we have six protons and we have six neutrons. That's a one-to-one -one ratio and carbon 12 is totally stable, but that can extend up to 1.5 times. So that means that if you had 1.5 times as many neutrons to protons, it could still be stable. It just depends, right? And so when something is unstable, uh, what happens is be, uh, radioactive decay occurs and then the nucleus of that isotope splits into two or more parts. Now the region of stability that we have um, is called a band of stability. And the way you get a band of stability is by looking at the proton number um, and then taking a look at the mass uh, number also. And so what we can see here is that if you look at, you know, this kind of yellow little line that's running through that kind of steps up, uh, these are the stable isotopes of those elements. And then anything that is radioactive that appears in nature, that would be in green. So you can see that there are three isotopes of um, hydrogen, and two of them are stable, and that one of them is not. And then you can see here that we have four isotopes of helium, and only two of those are stable. And then you can follow that pattern as you go up. But again, the yellow part is what we would call the band of stability, and it is the portion that kind of uh, follows this one-to-one -one or 1 1.5-to-1 1 ratio as you go up. So let's talk about the different types of radioactive decay. So um, radioactive decay, there are more than three types, but these are the three that you need to be aware of. So we have alpha decay. So alpha decay can be written in one of two ways. You can either write it with just the symbol alpha, or the preferred way is to write it as this isotope notation um, for helium. So you've got four for the mass number, two for the atomic number, and then that element would be helium because the atomic number matches. What is the result of alpha decay? Your mass number is gonna go down by four, your atomic number is going to go down by two. How powerful is alpha decay? Alpha decay is the least dangerous type of radiation and it can be stopped by almost anything, including a single piece of paper or a piece of clothing or pretty much anything. Alpha decay is kind of the safe, if you wanna call it that, form of radioactive decay. So on the periodic table, what do you do? You always are gonna move two elements backwards when you see alpha decay as a type of radiation. So here's an example. We have radium-222, and then that is making polonium-218, and you can see this is our alpha particle being jettisoned from the inside. So literally, a chunk of the nucleus is being shot out, and that contains two protons and two neutrons. And so that's why it's, again, called alpha decay. You're breaking something into two smaller pieces. Second type, beta decay. So beta decay, can be written like this. So this always kind of confuses people, but um, you've got a zero for the mass number. Why? Electrons are so light, their mass is virtually zero, right? It was such a tiny, tiny fraction of a proton or a neutron. Now the atomic number obviously doesn't exist for an electron, but it's negative one. And the reason why it's negative one is uh, kind of for a account balancing technique that we use when we're looking at atomic notation. So it's not a negative one because the charge on an electron is negative one. It's a negative one because that's the way the atomic notation works best. Um, and when we do an example, that'll make way more sense. Uh, another symbol you can use is the beta symbol, but you have to put a little negative sign. And that's because there is 
some type of radiation that we're not going to be talking about called positron emission. And uh, a positron is like a positively charged electron. So we want to make sure that we make everybody know that it's a negatively charged one. What is the result? The mass number doesn't change. There's a zero there, right? Atomic number, though, will go up by one. So you're actually moving up the periodic table. How powerful? Beta decay is pretty dangerous, uh, but it can be stopped by pieces of metal or wood. So if you're inside of like a house, you know, um, and you're not near windows, beta decay is not going to be very harmful to you at all. And again, you go, <laughs> it says two elements forward. You only go one element forward. So I need to correct that, but uh, that's when you're doing beta decay again. You're moving up by one because the atomic number is moving up by one. Beta decay. All right, so we've got lithium eight. Uh, notice that what's happening here is we're making beryllium eight. So we're moving up one in the periodic table. Uh, also notice that this electron is not one of the valence electrons that's on the outside of the element. It's an electron that is being jettisoned from inside of the nucleus. And so if you're wondering how is there an electron inside of the nucleus, that doesn't make any sense. It's because neutrons are actually made up of a proton and an electron stuck together. So if you put a proton and an electron and you stick them together, that's what makes the neutron. Um, and incidentally, um, when that electron is jettisoned, now you have literally turned a neutron into a proton. Um, and so that's what causes this atomic number to go up, but the mass doesn't change. Because remember, the mass number is protons plus neutrons. And so if you're not changing the number of protons and neutrons, all you're doing is you're just basically shifting one. Um, changing one into the other, uh, then the mass number shouldn't change, but instead your atomic number is going to be the one that actually does change. Okay, gamma decay, the last type we're going to talk about. So the symbol can be a gamma symbol like this, or sometimes you'll see a gamma symbol that's written with a mass number of zero and an atomic number of zero. What is the result? Mass number doesn't change, atomic number doesn't change, but this is the most dangerous form of radiation, and it can only be stopped by thick layers of concrete and lead. Now, on the periodic table, nothing changes when you do gamma decay. It's literally just more of like a warning, letting you know that some dangerous byproduct is being made. Um, and we already talked about gamma rays, so you already know about gamma rays. So here's an example of gamma radiation. You've got uh, plutonium-240, and it is still plutonium-240 on the opposite side, but it is emitting lots of gamma radiation. So how do you go about solving types of problems like these? Well, the first thing you need to do is pretend that the arrow is an equal sign, just like in a math problem. Second, your top numbers, that would be your mass numbers, they need to add up and equal each other. And then the bottom numbers, those are your atomic numbers, they need to add up and equal each other. And then also remember that these types of problems all involve decay, right? So you have a large atom that's breaking up into two or more smaller pieces. All right, let's do some examples. So we have U20, uh, U238 undergoing alpha decay. Why don't you try writing down what you think the product of that would be, given the rules? or pause the video, and here is the answer. So notice you make thorium-234, the mass number went down by four, the atomic number went down by two. All right, let's fill in these blanks. So we have neptunium-241, so let's fill in this blank first. Find your neptunium on your periodic table. It's number 93. Next, let's see if we can fill this top row in. So 241 equals something plus four. I can fill that in. 237 plus four is 241. And then number 91 on the periodic table is proactinium. So that would be Pa. That's alpha decay. Let's do a beta decay example. So again, C14 undergoes beta decay. Try writing that in atomic notation and then see what your result would look like. Or pause the video. All right, here we go. We've got C14. Again, mass number not changing but the atomic number is going up by one, which means I'm making nitrogen 14. All right, let's fill this in. So we've got here at the bottom, let's fill in some blanks, 20 and nine. Okay, nine is my atomic number, which means my element on the periodic table is fluorine. This top number doesn't change because it's beta decay. So that means that that would be 20. And then what would this need to be in order to equal nine? It would have to be 10, 
10 minus 1 equals 9. And now we have our final isotope notation for all of our reactants and products. Last one. Here's how gamma decay works normally. So it's not just, you know, oh, gamma rays are being released. Normally it's, great, we have alpha or beta decay, and then gamma decay is also occurring at the same time. You can write it all together on one line, but we have nitrogen 15. And I put the wrong atomic number for a second, but uh, I corrected it. So we've got nitrogen 15. That makes oxygen 15 because it's beta decay. Remember, this moves up by 1, so I go from 7 to 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. And then I added a gamma ray here at the end. Again, you can include the zeros if you want to, but you don't need to. And that's it for this lesson, so hopefully that made more sense. If you have any questions, let me know.